Hello folks and welcome. So LMDE5, Linux Mint Debian Edition, Cinnamon Desktop. Today's video is going to be a basic video. It's basically um, a video that I think that uh, every new users of LMDE5 should be aware of. And I'm going to be discussing uh, keyboard caps lock indicator, visual indicators on your screen. Also something, uh, a visual indicator on your panel bar. I'll talk about different options in the accessibility menu, such as high contrast, large text, those kind of things. How to change the time date thing from the 24 hour clock to 12 hour clock with a day of the week and month. I'll talk about moving these little buttons here from this side to these sides. Most of this stuff is very basic and easy to do. I'll touch a little bit about the screensaver and power management and the relationship between those two. I'll also talk a little bit about the calendar and also a couple of tips on the file manager Nemo. So again, this is a basic video for new users. This will be more than two minutes as with all of my videos on my new YouTube site. Um, I have chapters or timelines on all my videos so you can stop them and look at the chapters. You can also watch my videos on your smart TVs if you have a YouTube app. Just pay attention to the name of the channel. Well, in either case, if you are brand new to LMDE, I will say welcome and let's get going here. So um, we have a settings system settings control center. You can right click on the panel bar system settings. So we're going to talk about the accessibility first. Now, high contrast, um, you'll notice a lot of changes when you activate that. Now, so I'm using Simple Screen Recorder to record this video for you folks today. And I want you to notice that icon will change when I flip that switch. And also all of these and the icons in the menu. And also take a look at the text in here. Um, when I turn this on, the icon changed. And uh, slight changes in a lot of things. And then I'm going to turn that off and turn on large text. So the large text just got a little bit bigger. There's another option in here for font selection. You can change that in here. I do recommend screenshots if you do this, but you can also increase the font here and hit select. Screenshot tool can be found in your Mint menu by typing in SC and looking for that tool. There's usually only three options. The uh, full screenshot takes a picture of the background and um, the windows and the panel bar. This is your panel bar. If you're brand new to Mint. Uh, the other one is window only and the other one is selection. But I do recommend if you're going to alter anything like that is to do screenshots, especially this one. That way you can see where you started, just in case. All right, so accessibility options. So I'm going to turn that back off. I'm not going to talk about every single option, folks. It's, it's just a, what I consider the basics that people should be aware of. The next option, though, you may find useful. All right, um, give you a hypothetical. You went in to uh, open up a web browser, you logged into your bank or whatever uh, account that required a username and password, and it's failing password, and uh, we've all done this. We look down and go, oh, well, our caps lock key is on. Would you like to have a visual indicator or possibly one on your panel bar that tells you your caps lock key is on? All right, well, we have a couple of options. This is default, by the way. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to depress my caps lock key so you can see it right here. And then I'll, now it's off. I'm going to do the same thing with a numeric lock. It'll represent as a number one. And that's off on and off, but it goes away. So if you want something semi permanent, you'll have to install that. And it's easy to do really easy to do. So take your mouse and right click on this panel bar and look for this thing. It looks like a puzzle piece called applets. These are applets. So click that and don't let this busyness, um, you know, bother you. And basically just it kind of ignore most of it because some people get overwhelmed when they look at stuff like this. So take it in stride as one would say. Download. And if this is the first time you open this, allow the thing to update and then go into here since we're looking for something that has to do with caps lock as in your caps lock key on your keyboard then put in CAP okay 
So the cap lock indicator that I'm looking for is lock key indicator with notification by better lock. That's just the one I prefer. I believe there's a couple more in there, but more importantly, I just did a search with cap on it. So I'm going to click the install arrow. And what it does is it'll give you a check mark here and then you click manage. You click that and you can now add it to your panel. It'll blink here for a second and a lot of people go, well, something's wrong with it. Actually, it's not. It just hasn't been configured yet. You do that over here with this gearbox. So open that up and it's a simple configuration. Uh, this is all up to you if you want notifications or not. If you do, when you depress one of those keys, they'll have a post-it note up here and then it'll go away. So I like that feature actually. It gets my attention. So I'm going to turn these on one at a time just to let you see them. So this show caps lock indicator is that one. It looks like an alpha or A. And then show num lock or numeric lock indicator it has a number on it. So they currently are, are telling me the actual state they're currently in. So they're off. In other words, my caps lock is off and my numeric lock is off. I don't use the scroll lock indicator. So I'm going to close these boxes and I'm going to leave it here for the remainder of the video. Now since I activated this, when I depress my caps lock key, I'll get a, a brief post-it, then it'll go away. I'll also have a notification and, and this will also light up and stay lit. So here's the demo. I'm pressing the caps lock key. Uh, you can see that uh, the post-it note goes away, so does this, but this remains. I'll do the same for the uh, numeric lock or num lock. And that will remain on the screen. So right now I'm going to turn off my caps lock and I'll leave this for the remainder of the video. I find this very useful myself. Let's move on. Right click, system settings. So that was the accessibility keyboard option of visual indicator for the post-it note and the right click applet puzzle piece is an applet. Again, that applet is called lock key indicator with notifications and you need to make it active and configure it to use it. All right. So really, um, there's more options in here, but I just wanted to bring that one to your attention. Let's move on to this time date thing. So this is a 24 hour clock that comes standard when you install this. Hit the date and time and then pick your time zone if it's not correct. These are clickable. So if I were to change the city from Rome to something else, um, again, you can probably see the little grids in here. They're time zones. So if I pick that, for instance, Bob is my fictitious user. So I just need to put Bob's password in here. And hopefully my caps lock key is off, right? It is. And authenticate. Now I can change that. Now I'll just change that to this time zone here. And uh, more importantly, I can click on different time zones. Just giving you some examples of how sensitive and how small this little area is. And more importantly, you can click around in here. So I'll go back to Rome. All right. I don't really do anything with the network time, but the, here's the, the change you can make over from 24 hour to 12. So when you slide that over, that becomes AM and PM. And then if you want to display the date, slide that on, and that becomes AM and PM. And the day and, uh, and a month and all that good stuff. If you want the seconds, you can click that and watch the time click by. And that's pretty much it for options. I'm going to turn that back off. And I'll leave it just like this for the remainder of the video. All right, so that was time date thing. So I'm going to go down to the bottom row here and talk about windows for a second. This will be having to deal with these buttons here. Not the window tilings, windows. And I'll only talk about the one option. So basically, if I wanted to move these guys here over to here, I go from right to left and you're done. There's other options in here you can explore. But I'm just going to continue going. So the screensaver is set for 15 minutes. You can set that to never one minute or one hour. And it does have a relationship with this icon here called power management. Because this also turns off your screen when inactive 
for so many minutes or however this is set. Okay. And then if you do have a power key on your keyboard, um, the reason that it says asked, because when you depress, if you have a power key on your keyboard, uh, it will do this dialog box. I also have a separate video already posted on my YouTube site on how to uh, take one of your keys and uh, assign it to do a function like this if you want to explore that option. Now I'm going to continue. And uh, printers are fairly self-explanatory. If you uh, have a network printer, it should auto-discover it in most cases. Mine did. You know, things have progressed over the years, as one would say. I didn't have to install anything. It just auto-discovered my printer because it's a network printer. If you're doing this with a USB-based printer, you may have to use the add and follow the instructions. But it's pretty basic. All right, now I'm going to close that and talk about the file manager. So when you point to this icon, it just says files on it. This is Nemo, your file manager. It's a wonderful file manager. It does all kinds of little things for you. First of all, our, my user is Bob. It's a fictitious name, obviously, but more importantly, uh, you can resize the icons doing it this way. Or you can go to the menu and click the zoom in and out, and you can also use the control plus plus. So if I use the control, hold it down and do plus plus, it makes it bigger, or hold it, the control key down and use negative, 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 it makes it smaller. Or I'm still holding the control key down, grabbing a hold of my computer mouse, and my computer mouse has a scroll wheel. I'm going to scroll up and down to resize that on the fly. That is how I do it. And I do this with pretty much all my Linux distros uh, as far as the file managers are concerned. And it works in a lot of different Linux distributions that way. All right, so now that I pointed that resizing thing out, let's take a look at the information underneath the icon. So that pictures folder, let's focus in on that for a second. So as I make this bigger, you can now see that it populates some more information, like item. What's an item? Well, there's one folder here, so that's one item. Here's music. It has five items. One, two, three, four, five items. You get the idea. Okay. Now, I'm going to resize these to nothing, where you can not even see anything in here. Well, that's just my cons. So I'm going to go to pictures for a second and go to wallpapers, and I'm going to make these really large. You can use it the old-fashioned way. And then I'm going to switch over to here. I just want to let you see this. So they're independently resized. The windows are independent. They'll remember the size that you were in. So whatever is comfortable for you. If this is comfortable for you, leave it in that size. Now I'm going to go back to the other folder. And this is going to be remaining in that size until I change it. There's a scroll bar over here. And if you're interested in wider scroll bars, you can uh, go check out a video on my YouTube site. I'll just give you one tip on searching for keywords on my YouTube site. Go to the uh, community tab at the bottom. There's a little tip for you on how to navigate to do searches for keywords inside my own YouTube site, just as a tip, if you're wanting to know how to make wider scroll bars. But in either case, I will scroll this back to make this a fairly reasonable size thumbnail and release the control key, or you can do it the old fashioned way. Now I can scroll normally, and then I can pick some of these little um, things out. Now, th there's a tip for you here. Uh, if you click on an image, doesn't matter if it's wallpaper or a picture, and hit your space bar, you can get a preview of that and hit space bar to close. I'm not doing anything with my mouse other than clicking on the image once. And I'll move my mouse out of the way and hit the space bar just to let you see that. And I want to hit the space bar to close. It's a nice little feature with Nemo, the file manager. Space bar. And then if you want a larger, you just move your mouse toward that resizer bar and hit it. And that's a full screen. And now I'm going to hit the space bar again to close. So I can do this with any thumbnail, including a PDF. I have uh, two examples for you here. Here's uh, one PDF. It's a manual of a TV set. Space bar to close. And that's just a, a landscaping supply thing. Again, I can... This may find, I, I asked, um, when I had my previous channel, I, I posted this photo one time and I asked folks to make comments on it. And 
and somebody got it. And what I was after was it looks like a penguin to me. Here's the nose part and the uh, the body. That's just some some weird stuff. Space bar to close. So again, you can resize these to your heart's content, and more importantly, pay attention to what I'm looking at here. Is I have also um, the file sizes underneath here. As I scroll the other way, I don't have I have less information and all the way down to to nothing, but I can still click on these things. So if I wanted to see a larger version of that, I hit the space bar. I'll click that one. Looks like a, a tree or something. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a tree. I collected a lot of wallpapers over the years. So, a lot of different things, different pictures of family and different, uh, you know, different areas that I've been to. And I'm sure you have plenty of digital photos of maybe your kids or nature or friends or pets or whatever that you may want to use as wallpaper. So I'm going to scroll up and let's say I wanted to use that weird thing right here as wallpaper. Just right click on it and set it as wallpaper. I'm not going to do that, but you can rather easily. Okay, I think I am pretty much done other than the fact I will point out wallpapers while I'm at it. Right click change background and you have your standard folders from Linux Mint. I'm also going to remove this on purpose and let you see that you can add your own folders. So if you are you you've done with this wallpaper business and you want to set a wallpaper folder instead of just a single picture, you can also do that. So you set up something in your file manager like I have set up the folder called wallpaper. You can call it whatever you want and then deposit your photographs or or wallpaper that you downloaded off the internet. You can even mix them up. I have minor Heinz variety. And then how to assign a folder to it? Well, all you do is hit plus, go find your folder, hit open, click that, and then I'm gonna show you a neat little trick. You hit settings, play the backgrounds as a slideshow, and you can change the times on here to whatever you want. The minimum, I believe, is one minute. So in one minute, this will change to whatever images are inside of this folder. And I have lots. So I'm not going to wait the full minute, but it will go depending on the order that I have selected here. Play it in random order or sequential order. This will be random. This will be sequential. So be, basically, this one is the next one in line. If it's random, then it could be bouncing all over the place until it just cycles through all your photos. And the reason they're grayed out and I can't click them is because this is currently running. And you can change the time on this. So every 10 minutes or all the way down to one minute or whatever time frame you picked. And you also have a, a little bit of control about the image, which is called aspect. You have these options. See, now the wallpaper just changed. Okay, and then if you turn it off, this will become dark again, meaning you can pick them individually. So you can do this with your photos of your kids or nature or whatever that might be. That's uh, one of the photos I took. Okay, doesn't matter what it is. So you can bring in your own wallpaper. This even tells me the sizes. So some of the nice benefit that Linux Mint has for you that you can turn on and off. So if you don't want to bring in a dedicated uh, automatic wallpaper changer, one of my favorite is called Variety, but you can do this automatically here too, just by sliding that on. Okay, It just defaulted back to my folder. Now what if I switch this up and use Linux Mint's folder? Ah, you can do that too. So now it's picking images starting over here. That's the first photo right here. Next folder, it's this one. Whatever that, I'm not sure what that is. All right, you get the idea? Okay, then I'm gonna turn that off. And now it's uh, stills, in other words. Okay, let's go back to the dark one here. All right, folks, I, that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. You folks take care.